Hey guys, uh, one of my other orders that finally came in that I mentioned earlier, uh, the 8-bit OS N30 Pro controller finally came in, and this thing is awesome. I've looked at every little detail of this, and they got it spot on, so I am very impressed what these guys did to this controller. So in this video, I'm going to be showing how you set it up on the Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to be using this thing on a Switch, Mac OS, Android, uh, Steam, Windows. And believe it or not, if you get the adapter, you can use this thing on your Xbox console. And on the original Super Nintendo um, console, and maybe others like the Wii U. I haven't tested the Wii U out yet. Um, I might try that to see if it is possible. But I think I would have to use the adapter for that. I'm eventually going to pick up the adapter. The only thing I wanted this thing for is the Raspberry Pi. So what I did is I went onto 8BitO's website and I downloaded the firmware. Enhanced Vibration Optimization for X Input Mode. So this is the patch that people were talking about. I download the firmware file first, which I did. Alright, press and hold L1, R1, start on the controller. The LEDs will blink red. Which, it's not doing anything. Oh, the top one here. And uh, connect the controller to your windows. Alright. Which that's done. This is it's installing device driver software. I will open up the program here. It says here, click on USB upgrade. It's probably installing drivers yet. There we are. And there it is. So I'll update it. <clears throat> I really have to do that. Okay. Firmware update dot dat. Firmware. Okay, the current one is 1.22. Okay, it's actually updating. So this is nice that they actually release firmware updates for this. So it definitely takes some time. All right, it says firmware upgraded. All I have to do now is close out of the tool. I can, it says it's not successfully installed, which is all right. Because uh, there's a, a mode that you have to hit for PC, Android, Switch, Mac mode, which doesn't matter. Alright, I'm going to unplug it and uh, I'll be going on there next. Before I get to showing you how to set this thing up, um, I do want to mention that when I got this controller, I was hoping that I would actually be able to have the rumble support while playing the PlayStation 1 games. I could do that with the Xbox controller and the PlayStation 3 controller if I enable the drivers for the PlayStation 3 controller, but unfortunately those drivers do disable the Bluetooth manager um, on load up, so it's do you want rumble or not type of deal, but when I got this controller I was hoping that would be possible, and at the moment it doesn't seem to be possible. Alright, so let's go into this controller and I'll show you how I set it up. Um, I did report um, the issue for the vibrating thing on Facebook's. Uh, there's a bunch of groups for the Raspberry Pi and stuff. And I was seeing if anybody else would have this controller. And apparently a lot of other people were wondering, like, how in the heck did you actually get this thing connected to the Pi? So I'm going to show you the way I did it and I'll show you how you would normally do it. But... The way I did it is by far better, so I'll show you that now. Alright, so I'm going to show you how you'd normally set this thing up, and then I'll show you how I set it up. So what we're going to do is go into RetroPie. This is the configuration part. Your theme may be different to mine. Uh, just go into your Bluetooth. Alright, now since you're in Bluetooth, you go into Register and Connect to Bluetooth Device. But first of all, I'm going to remove mine, uh, the Pro Controller device has been removed so start and Y is for the switch mode this works and start and B is for the Android mode so these two modes actually work for the Raspberry Pi um, but we will use the pro which it's that's what it's set on you'll notice the lights will start to move, wave back and forth that means it's ready to be paired 
So we're going to go to register and connect a device. It's going to search for it. Sometimes this controller is stingy and it'll stop. All right, it would say Pro Controller. You'd hit enter on that. As you see, it turned off. So I get this again. All right, it pops up Pro Controller. You need to click on that. Display yes and no. Um, it says an error has occurred because I connected it a different way, but it would work for you and then it will sync up. So we're going to do it my other way. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the ports, virtual desktop. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to install Blue Man. I have uh, in the description uh, the sudo for both Blue Man and the module that you need. So all you have to do is just copy it, like so, paste it into the terminal, and hit enter. You need to do the same with the module. So I have both of them already installed, so I don't need this anymore. You will need to restart your Pi in order to see the icon at the bottom here. Alright, so what we're going to do, first of all, is I'm going to be removing uh, the Pro Controller. So you're going to have to get this thing ready to be paired. So hold start and Y until the light shows up. Now hold the pairing button until it turns off. And it will turn back on and do the same thing again. There we go. Now click search in the Bluetooth devices. Sometimes this thing needs to turn off, so hopefully I can do it fast enough before it does. There we go. There's Pro Controller. Let's click on it. Click Setup and click Next for pairing. There we go. Hit OK. It's successfully connected. So we just hit Next. This will fail. You don't have to worry about that. So that's it. Now the gamepad is now paired with the Pi. Alright, now since your controller is connected to your Pi, you're going to have to exit uh, to the command line. We're going to set this thing up now. So what we're going to do is, I have my keyboard already set up, but you're going to have to go to your configure input in your main menu. And you just push on any button. It'll say Pro Controller right there. And it'll just give you a list of what you got to do. It says D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger, left thumb down, right thumb down, left hand analog stick up, down, left, right, right analog stick up, down, left, right. I like to use this one for the hotkey uh, because if you want to go into the menu you can push this and hit this instead of going over here and pushing that. It makes it easier having the star as the hotkey. And that's it. There. Mm, I said virtual desktops is favorite, which is my favorite. But yeah, now we can back out. We can use this. All right, so what I'm about to do is test out uh, the delay between the controller and the game. Um, using my iPod, running at a hundred and some frames there, just to give you a rough idea of uh, um, the time in between it takes for Mario to jump. And let's see. So you can see that there's a little bit of a delay. It's not much of a problem. I've been playing Zelda with this controller for a couple of days now and it hasn't been a problem whatsoever. But if you're playing like fighting games where you need to have that precise accuracy, uh, this controller will need to have some tweaks to it. And the enjoyable thing about RetroArch is when I go into the menu here, their updated version has this latency option. 
So you can um, mess around with this to change um, the frame rate. You can speed it up a bit uh, to get this thing more precise or any other type of controller that you want. So this option exists. This thing is actually really nice. A lot of people really love to use this and they probably are now. But uh, it's not really a problem. Right now, my problem is I didn't map the buttons properly for this game. It's over here. That should be here. That should be a hold for run. Should be jumped. So my buttons are kind of messed up on this game at the moment. Yeah. Crap. <laughs> so I want to have a look at some of the small features on what they did with this controller. And uh, just to mimic the original, as you see, the original one is at the top here. Uh, this is the 8 bit -o. If you take a look here, there's a tiny little ridge on the 8 bit that actually exists on the original right here. So that is cool how they went precise on that. If you take a look on the edges here, you can see even the mold itself is pretty spot on. Another really cool thing I see is if you take a look at the screws, screw layouts, they're in the exact same spots and including where the stickers would be. Um, only thing is this one actually has ridge, this one does not right there, but besides that, that's actually really impressive. The size, the shape, you see? Yeah, that looks great. So what we're going to do here is check in between the original buttons and the 8 bit -o. And I have the Xbox controller here because, uh, believe it or not, these buttons um, are similar to the Xbox controller um, for pushing down. Uh, these here are mushy. Uh, maybe it's because of the fact this controller has been well used and on top of it the rubber pads is probably just getting weaker because they're older than hell. They could have been like this at one time. Uh, but alright, so we're going to look at the directional pad first. It's got some pressure to it. Nice pivot in the center. Original. Mushy. Bit loose. Um, start and select. These ones um, feel a little bit more clicky. It's because the pad itself is a little more tougher. Uh, it's probably this one was like that one time too. It's just like I said, it's got really, it's really old, so it's just probably worn down, and it's been well used over the years. All right, so eight bit on the left. I actually really like this one. I find it better than the original. Yeah, other than that. <laughs> Not perfect, but really nice controller. I will do another video of this 8-bit uh, controller sometime in the future. I want to see what it'll do on the Wii U, the Xbox, and the computer. I want to see its actual functions, but in the meantime, I'm only going to be using it on the Raspberry Pi, and uh, when that time comes, I can actually talk a little bit more about the controller, on how it's been treating me through the times, and uh, 
go from there. But if you guys like this video, please do rate, subscribe, and um, I will see you on the next one.